Uh, we have a supersizing uh, society and uh, as a result we're, get, we're running into uh, obesity as a major health issue. And obesity is associated with diabetes, associated with the uh, development of endometrial cancer. Obesity becomes even a more important factor in uh, deciding upon treatment and on treatment outcome. And based on the fact that they have developed a disease uh, as a result of their lifestyle and as a result of perhaps some gen genetic issues as well. But endometrial cancer, uh, especially in the obese patient, is uh, emin eminently curable, uh, curable with surgery alone in most cases, um, occasionally requiring additional therapy such as radiation therapy or chemotherapy. And over the past several years, we've really uh, improved and honed down our uh, assessment of the uh, patient characteristics that would uh, allow us to perhaps tailor therapy and decide which patients do benefit from additional therapy, which patients do not. And this, is an, this has several implications. It, it's a cost implication, reducing costs perhaps, avoiding cost uh, adds, also uh, looking at quality of life. Uh, adjuvant therapy and endometrial cancer, uh, be it radiation therapy or chemotherapy, has obvious uh, effects on quality of life. And I think by looking at patients more carefully, we can uh, select those therapies that are most uh, specific for their uh, disease process. If we are looking at disease characteristics that may allow us to more specifically uh, design a treatment program, we need certain basic data sets. And the data sets come from adequate surgical staging, adequate surgical resection. And we know that adequate staging and adequate surgical resection uh, can be most uh, efficiently and probably accomplished in a better fashion by a GUN oncologist as opposed to a general practitioner.